I've got one question. Are you subscribed to the podcast yet? If you are not subscribed to the podcast, please stop what you are doing and go and subscribe, rate and review. That is all I ask in return. Um, I do want to know how this podcast is helping you. Trust me, I read the reviews over the weekend. Sometimes I read them after work and they just really keep me going. Um, Subscribing is completely free. You can leave a review. You can leave a five star rating. Let me know what you think about the podcast. Also, if you are listening via our other platforms, you can always like and follow us on Facebook and leave a review there. Again, on Facebook, Vanquisher the Podcast, on Twitter at VankPod, and on Instagram at VankPod. You can tag us in your photos. Um, Just let us know what you're getting from the podcast because at the end of the day, that's something that's super important to me. It's a journey for all of us. Please do not listen without making the commitment to let me know that you care just as much as I do. We are all in this together and you guys just don't know how much I rely on reading the reviews and reading um, emails. Also, if you would like to email me directly, you can reach me at vankpod at gmail.com. Um, I do reply to those within 24 to 48 hours. So um, that's something that's super cool. You can get some advice. You know, you can run things by me. Let me know what your scenario looks like. Um, and we'll see what we can do as far as either helping you, getting you through it. I mean, sometimes it just takes someone to talk to that actually can relate. I want you guys to know that I'm always here. I'm never, ever, ever far away. I uh, want to let you guys know that for April, we got 1,425 downloads. Imagine that, 1,425 downloads, and I got about 130 downloads within the first couple of days of May. Um, So that's super duper awesome. We also received our third donor. For those of you that don't know, I am working towards getting... um, My favorite microphone, a microphone that would make my production super, super easy. Um, I also am working toward getting VankPod on a few uh, domestic violence forums. A lot of people hear domestic violence and they think about, you know, um, marriages and things of very family related and not really mother and daughter. It's sort of like, you know, husband, wife, husband abusing kids or, you know, wife leaving husband and something transpiring. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't really think of um, mother and daughter abusive relationships and especially not narcissistic personality disorder. So I'm trying to add Vankbot um, to some domestic violence forums, chat rooms, resource hotlines, things of that nature. Um, because what we do know that there are little sisters that are under the age of 18 that need something that's going to help them. Now, I'm not saying that this podcast is for them or that they should listen to it, but what I do know is that we are meant to grow up fast in so many different areas that a few curse words isn't going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, it is about healing. And the trauma that we go through, our brain is maturing so much more faster sometimes than it should. We are able to distinguish right from wrong. Um, and, and where we can also get help from. So I'm just trying to get VankPod in front of more people and donors help me do that. I do want to give a, um, I do want to give a really, really special shout out to our third donor. It was super unexpected. Um, and it was just, it, it's always very kind to know that someone believed in what you're doing enough to pledge. I want to let um, Susan know that I truly appreciate her for making the pledge. And it was it was just such a blessing um, that, that she believed in us too, just enough as the other people to make a donation, you know? There are so many things that we throw our money away on, and there are so many things that aren't helping us. So for this podcast to be helping so many people, for you to pour into the podcast um, and show that appreciation means the world to me. I have missed y'all so much, like so much. My week has been super jam-packed. I got home today. Again, today is Friday, May the 5th. Um, I got home today, had to cut the grass, had to get up some leaves. It was already late. And I was like, I will not, not release an episode. I let them know last night via our social media that this episode, episode 16 was going to be something fiery. I want you guys to get ready. 
get situated, get comfy. Um, I'm going to take y'all on a ride. I am a defensive driver, so you have nothing to worry about. Just trust me as much as I trust you guys to share these intimate experiences and showing what it's like to to parent yourself and mother yourself and love yourself to heal. Y'all know what I'm going to say. They make me say it. I got to say it. So here it is. I am not a doctor of any kind. Nothing that you should hear on this show should be substituted as professional help. This show is for the healing of sisters. It's for the comfort, validation, and strength for us to all continue to make it through on this journey as daughters of narcissistic moms. Again, I am not a doctor. I am not a therapist. I am not a medical professional of any kind. I'm just a daughter of a narcissistic mother. And while it is no joke being the daughter of a narcissistic mother, that does not mean it can't be funny. Let's get into the show. Thanks for tuning in. This is Eve Davis Paul, and you are listening to Hey, 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 what's going on, good people? Um, Episode 16, the last day of my childhood. Would you believe the last day of my childhood was just Wednesday? Like, Wednesday afternoon. And it's so crazy because I didn't wake up knowing that that would be the last day of my childhood. Now, a lot of y'all probably like, yo, what the fuck is Eve talking about? Like, she she ain't been getting enough rest. She sounded a little delirious and mysterious. But this is definitely going somewhere. Um, On Wednesday, I got an apology for everything. While I was able to see that some things uh, have changed, it does not change my boundaries. Um, so here I am sitting at work earlier in the day, Wednesday, I think, uh, it was actually after my lunch. And of course we all feel a certain way with mother days looming around, but that does not mean that we have to get caught up in that current. So I'm thinking, Hmm, I wonder how Wendell is doing. I wonder, you know, what she's up to, you know, how's her spirits. And I will continue to say that thinking of our mothers never goes away. Y'all know I'm going to always keep it 100, like super all the way real with y'all. It's sort of like worrying about that elderly lady that lives next door to you after you see her mail is overflowing at the mailbox. You start worrying if she's okay. Then after two weeks goes by, you notice that her daughter drops her off after being on a cruise, a two-week cruise. She's fine. You're relieved. I kid you not. It's exactly the same thing, the anxiety and the buildup of not wanting to go over to the house. But being that nosy neighbor, you just can't stop thinking of the Life Alert commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. It's like, okay, that probably was on the cusp of a fucked up joke. I think naturally as narcissistic uh, abuse survivors, that we have such a protective and caring nature because we were groomed to have this uh, instinct and not only have it, but always offer it, even when it's not necessary. Don't panic. These feelings are super normal. Until you are able to form new emotional habits, um, they'll continue to show up in the exact same form. It's something that we had to show with our moms, had to give to our moms. So now as adults, it's it's normal. And I don't want any of you guys to beat yourself up about it. It's something that I've had to kind of grow through, maneuver through. You know how something could be happening and you're feeling like you have to spring into action because that's what you've always done. It's It's normal. Like, I promise you, it is normal. So the first thing that I thought of was... Well, curiosity killed the cat. So I'm sitting at my desk. I'm thinking of Wendell. And when I Googled the term, I noticed that the term curiosity killed the cat actually had a second part. And it was curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. I decided to dig a little deeper. And I found that the original term, which dates back to a British play, first performed by William Shakespeare in 1598, um, was care kill the cat. And in this term, care was defined as worry or sorrow. This proverb was used to warn of the dangers of unnecessary investigation or experimentation. I was super stunned to find this out. I was just like, oh my goodness. 
to know that the exact curiosity or care that I would exhibit could potentially harm me. I mean, think about it. This statement dates back to 1598. Our society has turned it into curiosity kill the cat. The original one before that was curiosity kill the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. The first term was used for uh, the warning of danger. Like, you can be so curious, you can care enough to the point where it would hurt you. Do you know how spot on that is for how much we care about our mom to the point where we will continue to put our hand on her? She is the fire. Our hand will be scorched the fuck off and we will continue to put our hand there continuously, continuously. Um, Finding this out and researching this was like super fucking crazy to me because the term came to me out of nowhere. It's like I'm sitting here thinking of her and I'm just like, wow, curiosity killed the cat. Hmm. Never knew that there was a, a an original, never knew that there was a second half to that statement. Um, but I thought that that was something that was super insightful. Thank you all for sticking with me through that um, big aha moment. And what I can say is um, as original as I like to be, is that care did not kill the cat. But I did reach out to Wendell um, on Wednesday, just within the moments that I was thinking about her. And um, this was the last day of my childhood. So y'all know I got some jokes for y'all. I, of course, made sure that I turned my caller ID off because I'm like, I don't want no beef with the bullshit. Uh, I tried on my work phone. I tested it a few times to make sure that it would come up as no caller ID. And then I was like, okay, here goes nothing. Um, It ended up being a 38-minute call. No yelling, no disagreements. She apologized for all the times that she had left me alone, that she um, left me to figure things out, for not having structure with me and for putting things on me uh, that shouldn't have been placed on me as a child. She listened to me. And when I say that that was super fucking new, like, we have not been able to have a conversation in years, like years. Like when I say like years, I mean like I may have been single digit age to the point where you're still listening to your mom and needing your mom for guidance and needing your mom to say things to you and actually just listening to her. Um, but for her to be speaking, for me to be listening, for me to be listening when she's speaking, for me to not interject, for her to not interject was a super crazy fucking dynamic. Um, we bounced from topic to topic. It was great. It was it was really just something that I did not foresee happening, but I went with my gut instinct. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to take a quick break, step outside, give her a call. Um, the dynamic was super new. I expressed how the breakdown of going into contact happened and why it was important to me. This was something that I hadn't been able to really share with her. And what I let her know, um, just in short, was that the toxic relationship and connection that she and I had left no room for me to be an adult. And, you know, some people may say, well, well, why did you put it all on you? Um, and the reason why I worded it that way was because... I need her to, if she doesn't already, which, you know, I hope that she does, see me as an adult grown woman with choices. You know, I, I need her to see that the relationship was not a typical mother and daughter relationship because for some reason she, I guess, either thinks or thought that it was. And I let her know that we were so codependent upon one another that I was not able to live my life. And yes, it may have been benefiting you to be so connected to me and I'm always there and best friend and connected and just super glued to your hip. And, you know, it's easy for me to be the outlet for abuse and, and just the list just goes on. But I let her know that I got to my adulthood and I did not have any skills to be an adult. And here I am, you know, engaged to be married. I have the opportunity, the blessed opportunity to be able to be married and have a family. And I'm feeling torn between 
separating or continuing to take the abuse and also force my wife and daughter to take the abuse. And anybody that's in, you know, the proper thought wave, I'll just say it like that, the proper thought wave, because I, I think I used crazy on the last episode. Um, anybody that's in the proper thought wave knows that as you get older, different things matter. Yes, I love my mom, always will love my mom, that will never change. But there are things that are important to me as an adult for me to continue in the other parts of my life. And being connected to her just did not allow me to be successful in the other parts of my life. So after I said all of this, I thought that, you know, she would kind of push back and, you know, call me crazy. You know, I might have been a few bitches, uh, ungrateful little bitches, all of those things. And, you know, she said, wow, I never thought of it that way. I'm just so sorry that um, you had to endure so much at such a young age. Something else that I was able to let her know was that staying connected to her only intensified the dysfunction for me, for her, for everybody around us. And she agreed. She objected to a few things, but not in a hostile way, um, which was so shocking. It was refreshing to me. Um, I did not let my guard down. My boundaries stayed the same. But I was just like, wow, I'm having a conversation with her. And it's super cool. You know, I am still hearing things that do make me anxious, but I'm able to control the things that I'm feeling. And for me, that was that was new. Um, That was super new that I mean, you guys have no idea the anxiety that I used to get when talking to her just over the phone. And for me to be practicing all of the things that I'm practicing, all of the things that I'm telling you guys, um, making these daily practices with other people in my life, co-workers, family members, friends, um, family, my daughter, my wife, being able to shit. I said family twice, <laughs> but being able to um, practice these things makes it easier and made it easier when I was speaking to her directly. And I never thought about that. I never thought that I would get a chance to tell her my boundaries and why all of this started. What was something that was non-negotiable when it happened and why I had to completely drop contact. Why I had to put a a restraining order in place. Um, She did ask if some mutual family members had spoken with me because she experienced indifferent behaviors from some. And I told her no. Um, that I hadn't been in contact with anyone uh, that she was telling me and mentioning about. But, you know, maybe they had heard the podcast. And this was my first time mentioning the podcast to her. I know that, you know, some of her friends have heard it and let her know about it. And some people, of course, disagree and think that, you know, I'm mom bashing and all of that, you know. What I want to let y'all know is that there's going to be controversy with every single thing. No matter what these days, you know, think about all of the nonsense that fills the tabloids. Think about all of the blogs. Think about all of the tweets. Think about all of the drama. There's going to be controversy with almost everything these days because there's going to be at least one person that doesn't like it that's going to tell somebody else that may agree. And not agree because they've heard the podcast directly, but just agree because they're feeling like they have to validate that person because that person is a friend and they don't want to disagree. That's just the world that we live in. So after me telling her that, you know, yeah, maybe they could have heard the podcast, she said, well, you know, I hope you take that down. Now, this exact statement with tone and um, assertiveness and assumptiveness, I don't know whether that's a word, but she was assuming that she had authority to say it. This tapped the little girl in me that would begin shivering at the knees and shaking at the knees and feeling shameful. And in the moment, I did get a little bit nervous. My first feeling was uh, of shame at the tone and conviction that she had had. And my mouth did not allow me to respond. And 
naturally, my reaction to anything that she says because it had gotten so bad was a quick response. Well, I'm not taking it down. Like, you know, my mouth would not allow me to respond. I literally did not respond. And it was like her conviction meant nothing to me. Not enough to where I would jump to do what she demanded, just like in the past. I was bothered, but the bother was different. The bothered was an assertive child jumping out in front of my body and morphing up in front of me to the adult I am today. Her apologies were affirming that I'm not crazy and her her actions should not be justified by any fucking means. I learned so much about how far I've come in that moment when she said, well, I hope you take the podcast down. I was able to see how far I fucking come with this, with her, with the journey, the things that I've stayed firm on, being able to set my boundaries, working with my communication, raising and strengthening my self-esteem. Like, y'all have no fucking idea. Like, her opinion of anything that I do is just that. It's her opinion. And I now know that I respect it, have the right to respect it, accept it, and leave it exactly where it is. Imagine getting to a place where you are able to hear um, her, her voice. She's telling you something that you don't like. It's not in a respectful manner. And you are able to literally almost not hear it. It was just as if, you know, it was literally just as if it just didn't happen. Um, but I was able to respect it, leave it where it was, not give it any water, uh, to help it grow. I just left it exactly where it was. And that moment was groundbreaking for me. Um, it was almost as if I was just a brand new person in the past. I would have probably said something like, well, like, why why should I have to take it down? Um, it's helping so many people. Uh, have you ever heard of freedom of speech? I probably would have sort of, like, blown it off. Um, but what that would have done was led to an argument. I mean, geez, like, how much of a headache overhead can be when you feel compelled to engage? I got to share with her uh, what the world looked like for me at 20 and how unprepared I was for everything even basic communication. I didn't get down in the weeds about accusing or finger pointing, but she was able to see how scared shitless I was with some of the situations I shared with her. We ended the convo with me letting her know that while Mother's Day is a day I don't intend on calling for, um, I didn't want her to feel left out as a woman that gave birth, something that by choice I may never do. Um, Part of being with my childhood and helping raising kids and fostering some years ago, I did not want her to feel left out. I did not want to get wrapped up in emotions of that day and that I wanted to call to let her know that I wasn't angry. I wasn't mad. I'm learning and I'm growing to be a better woman and that I hope that she was too. This closed the door on my childhood. I mean, y'all have no fucking idea. Like it slammed the door shut on my childhood because you know what I noticed? That I no longer needed her validation, like at all. I didn't need her to approve of what I was saying. What she said did not move me to make a decision that would potentially hurt or harm me um, or just not benefit me. You know, we, we have been sort of like herded like sheep into a stable, out of the stable. I mean, I I guess sheep are in stables. I don't fucking know. But wherever sheep stay, we have been herded into that area. And we are pulled out, snatched out, pushed back in, snatched out, pushed back in. And sometimes it just gets like, wow, well, what if I don't want to go? And what if I want to just live a little bit? What if I want to heal? What if I want to be happy? There's so many opportunities outside of this gate. There's so many opportunities down, down, down the road and so many things I haven't seen. And the first time we set the boundary and make the change and stick to it, they literally don't have a choice. They they have to follow it. And we've been conditioned to think that they don't and that they are actually the ones in control. 
but we are actually the ones in control. And sometimes it's just like, wow, I have control over this situation. It may, it may seem super strange because I know that it seems super strange to me to know that I had control over a situation that had been controlling me my entire life. But we have control over the situation. We're able to control the tempo, control the volume, control the sound, control the lighting. Every single thing that keeps it going, we are able to control it. And this break has been um, something that has been such an unexpected field of blessings in my life. Um, just when you think you are living your life to its full capacity and using all the things that you need to get by, a door will open up and you'll see a whole new pasture of greatness. You'll be able to walk into opportunities that you never thought would ever, ever, ever be for you. I mean, imagine that. Imagine how the things that you have not even been able to tap into because she is standing in the way. Now, A lot of people have reached out to me and, you know, well, are you preaching for daughters to go no contact? No, I am not preaching or recommending for daughters to go no contact. What we do with Bang Pod is we offer two support and solutions. What I know is that without no contact, this healing, this podcast, all the things I'm learning about myself, the opportunities I'm able to afford myself with better communication, better emotional state, better mental state, better physical state. Um, they None of these things would have been possible without no contact. No contact is a tool that is used to be able to get freedom back, to be able to regain all the things that you have lost. Um, it does not have to be permanent. Now, what I can tell y'all for sure is that I have no intention of being in contact with her. But it was a choice that I decided to make. And I learned that every single thing that I'm doing, every single tool that I'm introducing, every single thing that I've cried about, bitched about, fussed about, was angry about, and came out on the other side of, all of it was worth it. All of it has worked. I mean, Wednesday was like a test for me. But I was able to close the door on the little girl that wants validation, that needs her mommy to say yes, to say sure, to love her, all of those things. And I did not see it coming. You know, there, there's also a, a saying that I used to just think was so full of shit. Time heals all things. Um, some people will say, well, well, what does this mean for you and your mom's relationship? We we haven't gotten that far yet. I know that right now being in contact with her is not healthy for me. Now, when I got off the phone for about four minutes or so, I was panicking. Um, I texted my wife. I called her. She was able to have a quick chat with me and bring me back down. But what I noticed was that talking to her made me anxious. My life and my emotional ride has been so smooth and so um, expecting. It's sort of like I've created a world for myself um, to learn and grow and flourish to where I know the things that are actually happening in my life at every single point. Now, some people may say, well, that's impossible. You don't know what may happen. You don't know what made this. There are some things that I can guarantee won't happen and abuse and uncertainty and somebody lashing out. Um, was one of them. So just talking to her and kind of being just in that dynamic again, I got off the phone and I was I was a little anxious. Well, I was a lot anxious and it was exhausting. And I was like, you know, wow, the apologies were um, were helpful. And while the conversation was one of the no- most normal conversations we've had, I know that what I've worked for still cannot, should not, and will not be compromised. Um, What I want to let y'all know is that it is possible to grow through this. I have loved myself through this process, hug myself, rock myself. I've written, I've sang myself to sleep. I've cried myself to sleep. 
all of this has been such a healing journey. And the best part is that there are so many more roads for me to experience so many more destinations. Like for me to get to so many more amazing destinations and to know that I am making a difference in my life is, is, is groundbreaking. It's, it's, it's almost just like, gee whiz, like, wow, you know, how amazing that must be and, and feel. And if I could just be a fly on the wall to the growth that I'm exhibiting, it's just amazing. I want you to know, you listening, that this freedom, this strength, um, this courage is exactly for you. It is, it is literally, it's for you. It's attainable. It is yours. It is literally yours. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Wednesday was the last day of my childhood. I'm on this side of adulthood. It has been phenomenal seeing that I do not put myself in situations um, where I know I may be harmed. And not saying that, you know, my sisters who are in situations are willfully hurting themselves. But after a certain moment in time, we do have to draw a line in the sand. Like, have to draw a line in the sand. We are so much more valuable. And I did not know that before no contact either. So many things that no contact um, afforded me to see and to learn about how I should be living, about how I should respect myself, about how other people should respect me just off the top, just this period. But with um, my mother not showing that the first person that I have had contact with in life, anybody can come in and just run a fucking mug, dude. And it's so crazy. Um, But yeah. I'm so happy that I was able to share this experience with you guys. Uh, Wednesday was such a huge day of just going with my gut instinct, not knowing what I would get, trusting. Trust is a big thing. Um, And why I don't get too religious on this podcast, um, trusting in the Lord to carry you is something that um, I have been, I've been practicing and he never lets me down. He never lets me down. I want y'all to know that I'm always here. I love each and every one of you. Wednesday was the last day of my childhood. Imagine that. (laughs) At 26 years old, Wednesday was the last day of my childhood. When will be the last day of your childhood? Um, That's something to ask yourself. Are you done with this shit? Are you done with the uncertainty? Do you want your life to be calm and peaceful? And for you to, for lack of better words, no what you're doing, how you're going to be receiving communication and love and uh, eliminating hurt and pain. It is for you. It is rightfully yours. Until next time, much love.